Hello, hello, happy Thursday. Thanks replay, replay viewers for watching. And thanks YouTube viewers for watching as well. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time when we can relax and craft together and we work on a project from beginning to end. And we're here for about an hour every evening. And I hope that together we can uh, craft a happy life and, and work at that goal. <laughs> so, all right, guys, tonight our project is we get a new splendid sampler to block. So we are on block 11 of this quilt along. And we got Tulip in Bloom here by Nadra Ridgeway. And isn't it just so sweet? So this is a completely pieced block. There is no applique, no embroidery, no paper piecing, just good old cutting squares and sewing them together. So uh, that is just really pretty. It's pretty this way too. I think I'm gonna do a bright yellow flower, uh, a yellow tulip with all my, my yellow colors. So I'm, I'm super excited to get on this one today. Uh, it is still free, the quilt along for the first 20 blocks. And then after that, we're gonna be going from the book. So there's more information at thesplendidsampler.com. Uh, yeah, so this is block 11 we got. Uh, it's another one from the cover. So uh, whoever first noticed that all the free ones are coming from the cover of the book, I think, I think they might be right. Uh, but it's just so pretty. So I'm excited to get going on it. And I'm going to do something uh, unheard of today. <laughs> and that is I'm going to cut one piece and then sew it right away <laughs> instead of cutting all my pieces at once which is what i think i've done for every single splendid sampler block i think i've cut all the pieces first and then um and then sewn after but i was looking at the sizes of everything and nothing's really nothing is really the same where i can cut out a ton of things at once so I'm gonna just cut and sew just because I really want to sew. I haven't used the machine in a while since we've been doing a lot of uh, handwork stuff. So, all right, let's get going. I'm gonna flip you guys around. We'll get started here. Okay, we get to start with picking fabric again. Um, so I actually never cleaned up the fabric from last time. Oh yeah, watch out for those three quarters measurements. Yeah, so I did look through all of here. And a lot of times when I'm looking through the cutting instructions, I'm looking for uh, measurements that are equal to other measurements. Or like, you know, if there's a lot of things that are, that are two inches, then I can cut one two inch strip or layer fabrics and cut two inch strip, and then I can cut them to size. There is not a lot of that happening. Every single piece, is all really different from the other pieces. So I can't really cut all these strips really quick. So that's kind of why I decided, you know what? We're gonna just go one at a time. So I'm gonna just go through the instructions and, and, and just cut my pieces as needed. So like for example, this first bit, we are gonna take uh, this dark navy piece and we're gonna make some half square triangles it looks like. Uh, out of it. So uh, I will cut the two pieces for that. We need the navy piece. I think they said navy piece. Yeah, draw the diagonal line for, from the K square and an A square. So yeah, we need a three inch square and a three inch square. So those are the two, two of the same thing. So I will layer those on top of each other and cut a three inch square and we'll just sew that piece and then we'll move on to the number two and we'll cut those pieces and sew them. I think we're gonna just do it that way tonight. But I do still wanna pick my colors beforehand. So let's, let's, grab, let's grab those. So I have this mass of fabric out from last time yet and then I have my bin with, with fabric. I'm gonna scoot you guys way up higher so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, all right, so bin of fabric, little uh, bits of fabric here. Let's just lay them out so we can see. Oh, I'm not gonna use my bright ones. I'm only using the bright crazy ones every uh, five blocks or so. So we would, or we're not using those. So this, this stack right here, I'm only using occasionally. So none of those we're gonna pick from here. And you know, we'll throw in these. I haven't folded these up yet. So I do wanna make 
Well, first of all, white background. I've been using the white background for everything for all my blocks. So we got that picked already. Okay. What else? So I was thinking it'd be really fun to do a yellow tulip. We have a lot of yellow tulips at my parents' house and I just think a yellow tulip would just be really fun. So I want to grab like my brightest yellows I think that I have and see what we got there. Because I have a lot of tans. I, I, want, I want all the yellows. This is kind of an odd odd yellow. It's a little different tone. It's kind of got a little bit of green in. I don't know if I want to use that one. Um, and I don't mind if it kind of blends together and looks like one solid toothpick, <laughs> toothpick, tulip, <laughs> even though it might be different, different patterns. See, like these are different patterns, but they look awfully similar. I think that's kind of nice. So we could go all the same, but maybe we make Maybe that little middle piece is this slightly lighter color. So it'd be like middle. I like kind of I like kind of seeing what it's going to look like. So this would kind of be the middle piece. And then we'd have these two pieces which could be these and then we need these little sprouts on the end. The dots are kind of the dots are kind of pretty. This kind of blends quite a bit. I think let's make it a little different. So let's let's do the dots. I think that's kind of sweet. So let's let's do these. This is going to be the tulip. And look, it, it's going to look really. It's going to pop on the white. I think. So for the uh, leaves, so we have two colors there. So I want to stay away from the whites. I think, um, and go more of these beigey things, just so it looks it looks different. Oh, this is awfully cute too, but. I like the tulip how we got it, so we'll just set this aside. I think maybe these flowers are too much, and we've been using we've been using a lot of these flowers lately. So let's just let's skip the flowers for for a block. Let's get as drab as we can with these. So maybe these circles. This plaid is awfully cute. Yeah, this one it does appear a little bit of a little bit green. It would be really kind of nice for green, but I think it's just maybe I want it to contrast from the yellow a little bit more. Maybe maybe this is a little light. Then we could add like one little swirly in it. Could always use these little sweet guys. You know what? I think let's just make a quick decision. I think we're going to do these these two for the leaves and, and just be done with it. So, all righty. Fabrics picked. Uh, the nice thing about choosing all these fabrics up front and knowing that there's a hundred blocks, it really doesn't matter what fabrics I put together because all in all in the final in the final piece, everything in the final quilt, everything is going to just all all blend together so I'm not too worried. I, I pick fabrics quick at this stage just because I kind of can uh, because we've we've pre-picked them. So all right let's shimmy this to the side. Okay so now I just have to remember what's what so I think I might label label them. I think I'm going to label them up here because I'm not quite sure how they relate down here. So um, this is going to be white. Yeah I'll get you guys back down here now. So you can see white. Uh, this is going to be polka dot. This is, what did we say? Let's call it vines. Kind of little vines there. And then this is just like a, like a gingham. I'll do ging. Okay. And then for the leaves, we have Let's call this circles and this little bit is, I don't know, spirals. <laughs> okay, we got it. So this is going to be my, my like code for the rest of this. Some people, if you're working on a big project that you do this, um, some people will cut swatches and put them by uh, 
by the um, by the names and stuff here. So, okay, like I said, I'm gonna skip the cutting directions this time. Don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but I'm gonna go right to the sewing and just pick out what we need. And that's why I needed a code, just because I'm not cutting it out beforehand either. So, okay, we uh, draw a diagonal line from one corner on the wrong side of the K square. Okay, so the K is the cream, which is my white. So I need white, and then the navy is the A. I'm guessing this is the navy, so that's the polka dot. So I need the white and the polka dot. Man, we don't have much of this polka dot, polka dot left here, but I think we have enough for a three inch piece, and that's what we need. So let's press these quick. I'm gonna do two, uh, I'm gonna cut these together, and we'll see how that goes. I got my little rotating cutting mat. I think that'll help us a little bit. So this is just all kind of Frankenstein, which is perfectly fine. Um, it's just how it's going to be for, for the Splendid Sampler. Let's maybe cut off of this phalange here. Uh, you know, usually you want to cut in your nice long strips for a quilt and have, you know, save as much fabric as you can. But because I don't know what's coming up with this quilt, and just from experience from working on the last Splendid Sampler, I'm going to end up with like a Frankenstein piece where I just have cuts all over the place, you know, weird cuts, and it's going to be fine. We're still going to use up all the fabric. We're not going to waste anything. So I'm not too worried about super odd cutting. Like, for a perfectionist, uh, how we're cutting all these pieces is kind of cringy. <laughs> you know, we're just, you know, we're just slicing a three inch square out of here. Um, it's not pretty, but again, I know it's going to work for all the Splendid Sampler stuff, so I'm not too worried. Okay, let's just cut on here. I need, I need two, oop, that's not the iron piece. Here we go. I need some three inch pieces here, three inch squares. So let's, let's snag it out of here. Well, maybe I'll be wasting less if I, less if I do it here. Okay, we're gonna go right there, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna do one edge first. Make sure I get both fabrics in there. Just kind of squaring it up. Yep, got both fabrics. I put a nice, a nice new blade on here, so this should be like like butter today. Oh, you know what? I have a half edge here. Let's in this ruler. This ruler has like a. It goes. It has an ha extra half inch. On two sides, I want to go in the part that doesn't have that. I want to go right to the edge here. Oh, it's a, it's a, Lauren, it's a wool pressing mat. And uh, uh, I just love it so far. I got it off of Mass Drop when they were, they were selling, they were selling one there. Um, and it's been on Mass Drop several times, so I'm sure it'll come back again. Uh, but I love it. The only bummer about it is that they are not cheap. Like they're like 40 to 60 bucks, I think. Um, so, oh yeah, worth every penny, Gretchen says. Uh, it, it's surprisingly expensive, I thought. And, I, and I've, I've looked, I've looked at places um, to get them. I've even looked like industrial wise, cause I'm sure you could get some wool, wool from some other places that aren't the quilting industry. And even those, they're all priced quite a bit, but I do really love it. It moves around so easily, um, like from room to room, and I don't know. So far, I have I have no issues with it at all, and I and I love it compared to having my uh, my little ironing board that that was sitting up here um, forever that collapses and. You know, I'm always afraid that one's gonna fall off the table. This one, if it falls, who cares? It's just a, like a light piece of fabric. So, so far, I love it. And you know, I'm, I'm using it right on my, you know, this is just an Ikea table. I'm sure it's some sort of laminate. So the well, laminate's not bending or anything uh, afterwards. So, you know, like from heat. So I think uh, I'm digging it. I really like mine. They do occasionally come up on mass drop, so, you know, I mean, it does take a long while to get the mass drop stuff, but, um, 
you know, then it's a little surprise in the mail. You might be able to find it on like Amazon Prime for a little cheaper too, but yeah, for some reason they, they um, cost what they cost, but I love it. Uh, the name of the ironing pad, surely I'm not sure of the name. Uh, if you do, if you just Google like a wool pressing mat or go to Amazon and do a wool pressing mat, uh, mine is I think maybe 12 or by 18 maybe, something like that. Okay, so draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Uh, okay, so we're making half square triangles, triangle squares on page 137. We don't have the book yet. Oh, Robin, you got yours on Amazon. Yeah, you know, then you can get free shipping and it'll come right away too. Uh, square with the right sides together. So, and make two half square triangle units. Trim the units for two inches. Okay, this is the normal way that we've been doing um, our half square triangles. So let's do it that way again. I love this way of making half square triangles. I'm gonna try draw a diagonal line. I'm just gonna connect connect the two corners basically, making a diagonal on this white piece. And that's gonna be kind of my guide. Oh the um oh yeah so I'm I'm way in love with my my cordless iron too. So this is a Panasonic 360 because it doesn't it, it you you can press on that side or that side. Uh, cordless iron. This also I got from Massdrop. So here it is. It's it's the uh, NIWL 600 Panasonic. But if you just Google cordless Panasonic iron, um, and then if it has 360, and that's that's what I got here. Love it so freaking much. You do not know what you're missing um, when you're missing the cord. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. I, it's one of my favorite purchases that I've gotten in a while. Uh, just not, especially when you're working on a big project, uh, a big project, it's just worth it not to have that cord. It does have a base that it goes in. So the base is plugged in and you have to occasionally put it back in there so it can charge up again. Uh, so whenever I'm just setting the iron down, I just set it in the base. But while I'm pressing, uh, it's, it's out of the base and oh, it's nice. I love it. All right, so what we did here is I'm putting right sides together and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch, you know, our, our quarter inch seam allowance on both sides of here. So I'm gonna sew along this side and then I'll turn, rotate it and I'll sew along the other side. So, all right, so I have my, my scant quarter inch measured out all here already, and I have my, po my business card here, and I love, um, I can just put, I can just put the, my diagonal line right on the business card. That's where my scant quarter inch is measured, and can start sewing. You got a two-toe on mass job for toting your machine to class. Oh, it's way cheaper than anywhere else. Yeah, the nice thing about mass drop, it, so what mass drop is, okay, so it's massdrop.com. And they have occasional sales, kind of meaning like they'll have a sale and the sale will last like just a week. And one of the categories that they sell stuff in is quilting. So every once in a while, they'll um, have something that you, you just need. Like, and I swear they listen to our show here because whenever we start talking about something, they always they always throw throw it up there like a day later, like right now. Oh yeah, you guys, the grippets. Uh, I know a lot of you guys always ask about the grippets when, when I use them here. Um, I use them for free motion quilting, so you can put your quilt down here and move it around, and you don't have to wear the gloves. They have little rubbers on. Uh, the, and you can use them as rulers, too, for ruler work. They are on mass drop just for the rest of the day today, or maybe it has, maybe like halfway through tomorrow or so. Uh, so I put a link to those in my post here if you want to make sure to snag those this time around. Those come back pretty often. I think they're pretty popular. Actually, I think it's in their like popularity section or most requested section uh, this time around, which is awesome. Uh, so go check that out. Oh, you bought some grippets but haven't used it yet. Yeah, mine sat around a little. They waited until I had a, I needed a quilt to work on. 
I think I tested them right away when I when I got them, but then I had to wait for the Charming Chevron's quilt where we did all that quilting. Then, then I gotta use them. Let's keep saying wool ironing mat over and over. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Then then that will be up on Mass Drop, right? <laughs> Will ironing mat. Yeah, like Google's doing a, a search of our our terms and using it as keywords or something, right? All right. So we, we sewed on both sides of that diagonal line. Now all I'm going to do is cut right down our diagonal line. So we're, we're kind of splitting this and then we'll have two half square triangles out of uh, two sets of half square triangles out of just these two bigger pieces, these two bigger squares, which I think is a pretty fancy deal. Kind of like magic. Okay, so let's uh, cut on the diagonal here. All right, there we go. So here we go. Two, two half square triangles. There we are. So let's press these. It looks like we are pressing to the dark side. Okay, and whenever I have to press to a certain side, I always put that side up because then I, I can give the, the give it a little press before before I um, before I press it to the one side. And then if I just if I have the side that I want to press towards on top, then after I give it a little, give the seam a little press, I can just fold it open and then press the seam and it will magically be pressed to that dark side. See, it's, it's, uh, it's angled towards that dark side. So that's why I always have the side I want to press towards on top. Okay, so that is our first piece. Jennifer, for my extension table, I got mine from the same place that the grippets are made. They're from sewingmates.com and they have, uh, they have, it's an adjustable sewing table. So it looks crazy. It's got a whole bunch of, um, dials and you know it has a whole bunch of ways to to adjust it but it can adjust to any machine so you can make it taller or shorter or move all the pieces around so it fits your machine just right i think it's a fabulous idea because usually you have to tell a place what your machine model is and they'll custom make it for you but I'm always like, well, what if I'm not using my old sewing machine all the time, or I want to travel and have uh, use a different machine? This one uh, will allow you to do it. So here it is. Uh, it has, you can see, it has a whole pile of places to adjust and move, so it so it fits fits your machine. And I just kind of love it. So that's mine. It's from the same place that the sewing mate or that the um, that the grippets are from. So that's where, that's where mine is. Okay, uh, here we go. Now these need to be trimmed to two inch squares. So a lot of times, oh my gosh, yeah, we have tons of extra. Am I, am I reading that right? Trim the half, trim the units to measure two inch squares. Huh. All right, so they gave us a whole pile of extra here. So, uh, um, you know, a lot of times when, when designers tell you to make half square triangles like this, sometimes it'll be the exact amount and you can't trim any away hardly. And sometimes they'll leave a little extra so you can get a nice, you can square it so it's nice and square. But look, I have almost, I have over a half inch extra. So they gave us an awful lot. That's why I had to just check to see if my measurements were right, but I think they are. I think we I think we only need two inches off of here. So what I'm doing is I'm, my uh, ruler has a diagonal line. I'm putting that diagonal line on my diagonal seam. There we go. And then I'm going to just trim, trim the first two edges. 
Ooh, a new blade is awesome. All right, and then I'll just rotate and cutting mat so I don't have to move the actual piece. And again, now I'm gonna line it up with the two, I'm gonna line my diagonal along the diagonal seam again, and then I'm also gonna line up my two inches. But look at all that, that is a lot of extra, which is freaking me out a little bit, but I don't know, that's what the instructions say. At worst, I'll have to just make make them again, but let's let's double check that it says two inches. Trim the units to measure two inch square. And I guess they look small on the um, on the block, so I guess two inches makes sense. So here we go. Two inches. Okay, there's our first cute little finished half square triangle. Ah, I'm glad I'm doing it this way. I'm um, where I'm I'm cutting and sewing at the same time. I just was not. It's one of those days where. I don't think I'm up to spending a whole time measuring and cutting. <laughs> it's it feels good to feels good to sew and get feel like I'm getting some pieces pieces worked out already. So you don't always have to do it the same the same way every single time. We're we're changing it up a little bit. Cutting and sewing. Oh, so you guys, tomorrow I will be doing this on location. So I'm going to be at my parents' house tomorrow. And if all goes well, I will get there on time for, for the, um, for, for our 830 show here. I, we're going to be cutting it close, but I think we'll be fine. But I'm going to use, I'll be on location at her, in her sewing room. And I will be continuing this block there tomorrow. So you'll get a little, a little preview of my mom's sewing room. Uh, if you're newish here, then you probably haven't seen it yet. We were there a few times for the last Splendid Sampler. Um, I'm also gonna show you, she is doing Quilt As You Go for, um, for her Splendid Sampler too. And the more she shows me about it and the more I think about it, I think I might do quilt as you go in the exact same way that she's doing, doing it too. So I will show you that tomorrow. I'll show you her blocks and how she's doing the quilt as you go. And I think you guys are gonna love it. I have gotten requests here uh, to do a quilt as you go project. It's kind of like this mysterious little world that I've been like kind of looking from afar at for a while. So I've been wanting to wanting to try it anyway. And the more I think about it, I think this is the project to do it on. So I'll give you a little preview. I'll have a show and tell of her quilt so far. And I'll show you the quilt as you go and kind of explain it a little bit, even though it's way confusing to me still. Uh, I think I have it now, but it was confusing for me for a while. And then uh, I think we're gonna do it that way. But then we'll continue on. We'll continue on this block tomorrow as well. But it's gonna be show and tell of my mom's. I'm I'm so excited to share um, share hers with you. All right. So I'm gonna just for the sake of me not going crazy here, I'm gonna actually cross off the bits that we've used already because there are a lot of pieces here, and I I just don't want to get confused. So we did the K square and the A square to make those little things. All right, and, and we're done with one here. All right, what is next? So the G rectangle, okay, so that's from our white piece. Let's grab that. I think we're actually done. We're actually done with this, so I can put the guy away. We're gonna gradually just get less and less pieces here. So the G, okay, and sew the G rectangle to one half square triangle unit to make a unit that measures two and three quarters. So I think that's, I think that's this one. I think this one's the G. Oh wait, no, it might be this one. It's this one, this is the G one. Uh, so the I rectangle to the remaining half square triangle. So it measures two by, be sure to orient it like that. Okay, 
So we need the G and the I, so that's here and here. They do have some pieces that are the same, thank goodness. So they have a two inch, they have a two inch um, matching piece. So I can just cut a two inch strip and then cross cut it to this. So let's see, we got five inches and then another inch. So I need to cut a two inch by a, at least a six inch. Oh yeah, so if you guys, um, if you guys are on my group, my, uh, my, uh, um, Penguin and Fish Crafters group here on Facebook. You can just do a search for it and, and then click join. My mom has shown a little bit of her quilt as you go. She's doing a, a, um, I wonder if this is six inches. Yeah. She's doing a black and white quilt. And then every once in a while, there's just going to be a teeny tish of, of green or, or blue in there. And she's using all, all of my, uh, so my fabric, so I think it's mostly from the sweet, uh, the sweet tweets collection of mine, and uh, I think it's turning out so cute. Oh, Catherine, you did your first quilt as you go, uh, the first splendid sampler as quilt as you go by doing three rows, three rows at a time. Oh, so did you do three, like three? Wait, what do you mean like three rows? Like. You did a, a row of blocks and then did the, I don't know, you'll have to, you'll have to explain it a little bit more, I think. Um, but yeah, how my mom's doing it is she's doing four blocks in a grid like that and she's sewing those all together and then quilting those. And then she's doing another four blocks together, one, two, three, four, quilting those. And then she uh, connects those quilt as you go pieces with this little kind of magic um, little binding almost. I'm pretty stoked about it. So you joined three rows of blocks. Oh, and joined onto the next three. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so that gives you, it's not like a teeny pace, place to quilt. You still have a quite a big area to quilt, but um, not as big as a whole quilt, that's for sure. So that's that's a neat idea too, Catherine. I like how my mom's doing it with the fours, like grouping it by fours. And I think we did the math on it. We just did it, you know, when we were talking about it last night here, I could do five groupings of four by five groupings of four and have myself a quilt. But I'm excited for it from the standpoint of you're quilting as you make the blocks, so you get to skip, like completely skip, the huge quilting job that you normally have to do at the end, um, after you have the top finished. We'll have that part done, because we'll be doing it along the way. I mean, we'll have to take time to do it along the way here, but that might be kind of fun. And um, when you do quilt, you're only quilting small little sections, so you don't have to have your a whole huge quilt flopping around everywhere. So I'm pretty, pretty dang excited about that because, man, I don't know. We just finished that charming chevrons quilt and I'm not totally itching at getting at, a, at having to toss a quilt around again. So yeah. And you know, quilt as you go, like I said, that's one of those techniques that has been this little mystery in my head for a while, and uh, and it, it's reached its tipping point. It can't be a mystery to me anymore. I have to try it. <laughs> That's how most of my projects happen, is I just, I can't deal with it anymore. I have to know how it's done. <laughs> That's how uh, foundation paper piecing was for me too. All right, uh, we got our piece here, our two inch piece. Now we're gonna just cross cut it. Uh, all right, we need a three and a quarter inch one three nope we need a three and three quarters okay read those directions okay here's three and three quarters i don't really use these lines on the mat all the time for this i'm just i'm really using my ruler to square it up here and to square along that line just matching the edge of my fabric with with the lines to get it nice and good. So one, two, three, three quarters. Let's check again. 
Yep, three and three quarters. We are good. All right. That is the eye piece. Throw that there. And now this one needs to be two and one quarter. Two and one quarter. Okay, right there. Feeling crooked. You'd love to learn quilt as you go. Yeah, it, again, it's just been one of those little mysteries, right? And and it's just neat to have different options, right? It's And I think the Splendid Sampler is kind of the perfect style of quilt to do quilt as you go, just because it is a bunch of little blocks. We're not trying to put this whole picture thing together. All right, I already lost one of these, guys. Ah. Let's see. I totally lost a half square triangle already. Where did it go? Oh man. Okay, well, we'll have one for sure. So let's see. This one, I'm gonna have to, did it fall on the ground? I just checked my pockets for a half square triangle. It's not gonna be there. Ah, found it. Ha <laughs> ha, here we are. Okay, so we need to line them up like this. So it looks like the long side is here, and there we go. So that this is our G, our G piece. And the I piece goes like so. Alright. Just because I want to make sure this is right. For some reason I'm like nervous of getting this wrong, but I think we're good right here. So, all right, let's sew these two pieces and press them and then we'll have step two done. I like this uh, just sewing as we go, cutting and sewing as we go versus cutting it all first. This is way more fun. <laughs> all right, so right sides together. <clears throat> and now we'll, we'll sew that scant quarter inch. We'll see how well our scant quarter inch is for the rest of rest of this block. I can't remember, did we say it was too scant last time? I think I might have been making them too scant. But we ended up kind of right. I don't know. Let's just trust my measurement here. How about that? See where it takes us. All right, so I'm going to chain piece these. So I got that one. And now we're going to flip this onto here. Chain, oop, chain piecing just is when you sew more than one piece right after each other without cutting it. Um, so you'll have a bunch of pieces in a long chain. It's kind of fun. It's a time saver. Time saver and a thread saver. Mental health saver. <laughs> It's like socks, they disappear. Oh, I saw something like a funny meme on, on Facebook the other day. And it was like, for every sock lost in the laundry, it gets reincarnated as a Tupperware lid. <laughs> and I was thinking, that is true, true. Oh, that was pretty funny. Okay. Let's um, press these. So it looks like this time we are pressing towards the the white or to our to our strip. So I'm going to put the strip on top. Oh, you saw that too, Jennifer. <laughs> I thought that was cute. That made me stop. Stop me in my path and laugh. Okay, so I put the strip on the top so I could press in that direction. Cute, it's just, man, sewing two pieces of fabric together, when you get that nice clean seam, it just is pretty. It's like it, it's magically so much more finished feeling and so much cuter, I love it. You're stuck on uh, number seven instructions, how to measure and mark, dot and where to draw a line. Ooh, I did not read that far ahead yet. Oh, you're, you're stuck on, oh, on block number seven? How to measure and mark, 
dot and where to draw a line. Isn't the, isn't block seven that one that we worked on yesterday, the for the love? Or is it just, um, or is there a number seven here? Okay, let's just take a look at that real quick. We'll get to, we'll get to that instruction tomorrow. So I will be working on this tomorrow. Uh, so I'm hoping to get that far. On the wrong side, we're gonna run on the left. Draw a line from the dot to the lower, okay, on the wrong side of 1H rectangle. Okay, those are one and a third. Draw a line from to the lower right corner and place the H rectangle. Okay, here's what I think it means. I'm going to draw it out for you guys. So you have, you have a rectangle. I'm going to draw, just draw it bigger. Here we go, here's our rectangle, and it's one and three quarters inch wide. They want you to sew this nice diagonal here. So what they want you to do is, they want you to just measure, um, measure up one and a third and just kind of mark, make a mark there. So it's one and, a, one and three quarters wide. I think they want you to go up one and three quarters and just mark. So you can, so you can, so it's easier to make that sewing line. So, you know, when you put this green piece on, that green piece is going to be behind here like this. And it's also three quarters, it looks like. They just want you to have a marking point. So if you mark from here, one and three quarters. So we measured one and three quarters up. They want you to draw a line there and that's what you're going to sew on. So that's, that's what's going to give you a sewn line here. And then you trim it, and then you get this 45 degree angle. It is, if you have done a binding, it's exactly like that. She's just trying to make it a little easier for us to like find where that spot is. So that's, that's what I think number seven is talking about. So, you know, you got a one and a quarter, one and three quarter inch wide strip. She just wants you to go up on that long strip, another one and three quarters, draw a dot there, because then you'll get your nice... If you go from that dot to the corner, the corner of that strip, that will be that nice 45 degree angle. So does that make sense? I think that's, I think that's what number seven is talking about. All right. Whew, there's a lot of instructions on this one. Well, it is. It, it, there's a lot of pieces going on here. Okay, so we have these two. So this looks like it is, this one is, uh oh, is that right? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Upside down. So this is this piece here, and this one looks like it goes up here. So there we go. That's that's starting. We got we got our little tulip uh, petals there. Yay! Okay. So let's see if we can um, maybe do. We have uh, like 15 minutes left or so. Let's see what else we can do tonight. Oh, let's cross out number two. We finished number two and we are done with this G and we are done with this I. So I'm gonna really cross them out just so I can see what we have left. There's a lot going on here. Okay. Three, draw a diagonal line corner to corner on the wrong side of the B and F squares. Okay, so B we have the medium blue print. Okay, so that is, wait, draw a diagonal line from the corner to corner on the wrong side of B and F square. So, okay, we gotta do two of these. All right, uh, medium blue. Okay, that's our vines. That's, that's this fabric here. And then B, and F squares. F is white. Oh, so those are different sizes. I was thinking, oh, we'll get a cut two things that are the same again, but we don't. So one square F, right? B and F. Okay, so one square of white, that's one and a half inch by one and a half. Let's start there. Let's just, let's not go further than that. Let's do that. Um, okay. 
one and a half. Gotta make sure you get those fractions right. Uh, we must have a little iron piece there. This one's a little, feels ironed yet. So one and a half. Ooh, that's small. Okay, let's get square ruler out. I'm gonna get this nice and a good edge on this again. So one and a half. Yep. So here's my one and then the half. Hey, you know what? Mass drop, I'm just putting it out there in case mass drop hears me. <laughs> mass drops should put this rotating cutting mat and these the square ruler set up there. I love my little rotating mat and the square ruler set. It comes with a four and a half and a two and a half. They are fabulous for the splendid sampler. All right, doing our Frankenstein cutting out of here. You know what, I'm just gonna get these guys out of the way so I can see my, my edge here. Oh, you had to label each piece, keep getting confused. I know, it, it is one of those ones where you do have to really kind of keep track. That's why I, I made sure to label, label the photo. Uh, just because that seemed like a good reference. I was getting confused looking at the cutting instructions, but I wasn't as confused looking at the photo, so that's why I, I used that um, as my kind of my guide. Okay. Oh, Lisa, are you having... I, I think I missed a part of your guys' conversation. Are, are you having... Um, let me know if you're having trouble on anything here. This one does have a lot of pieces, a lot of different sizes, so it, this one's quite the puzzle piece for sure. So if you're feeling confused, you're definitely not the only one. I, I'm, you know, I'm doing all the tricks to stop being confused. Like I'm really crossing it off when I'm done. I'm checking it off. You know, I, I'm, I'm confused too. That's why I'm, I'm really kind of doing things to help <laughs> whatever I can do uh, to, to help me um, be less confused. Okay. Oh, Gretchen, it's about a five hour drive. So my husband has a meeting during the day and, uh, um, and so I'm gonna, we're gonna leave after that and then we're gonna try and make it home in time. Oh, it just looks hard to you because you're new to quilting. Oh, well, welcome. I'm so happy that you're giving it a go though. I mean, it does look hard. There are a lot of little pieces but yeah, keeping track of them. Um, luckily there's, you know, you have the images here. It is, it's like a tangram, you know what I mean? Or tanagram, I always call them tanagrams, but on making it, they call them tangrams. Um, all right, uh, okay, I cut that F square out. I'm gonna just cross that out already because I need to know that I did that. So I'm gonna set that over here. Okay, so the F square I did, no, I need those B squares. So I need two, what was it again? The medium blue was the vines. Okay, that's this one. I need two that are two and three quarters. Yeah, okay, so two and three quarter by two and three quarters. So I can, I can cut a strip and then cross cut it to the right size. So um, my strip needs to be two and three quarters wide and then it needs to be Let's see, ugh, math, so it needs to be four, five, like five and a half inches worth, right? Is that how math works? <laughs> All right, so let's cut a, a two and three quarter by five inch strip and see what we got here. Oh, Lisa, I have confidence that you'll figure it out and uh, feel free if, if you have any trouble, just send me a direct message or or um, join the, uh, if you're not part of the, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, go over there and ask the question to, there because everyone's super helpful there and we'll, um, we'll figure it out. I think I, can, I think I can get my strip out of this chunk here. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do it in this, this little bit here. We'll get it figured out though. Oh, you did already, awesome, Lisa. 
I know, ugh, Matt. I, 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 Kelly, there is a time in the day when math does not work anymore. I'm, I'm telling you, and it's, it's, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, uh, two and three quarter. Yes, two and two and, yep, two and three quarter. So let's let's get a straight edge here. It looks pretty straight, but I want to clean it up just to make sure. And what did I say? I need like a five and a half inch. It. Oh yeah, we got it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rotate this so I have the straight edge on the other side. You know what? I think I'm gonna just throw the ruler up here. Two and three quarter. So that's the measurement I'm worried about right now. And then we'll cross cut it to make it all pretty. Um, two, Three quarter. Bear with me as I count out my measurements eight times. Oh, you have to count it out on the ruler. Exactly. I do too. Like one, two, one, two, three. I mean, I can clearly see from far away that this is t two and three quarters, but I, get, I freak myself out. But I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Let's cut that strip and I'm going to cut. Ooh, I can barely get in here. Just cut that out right away too. All right. So this edge should be nice and square already. Okay, two and three quarters. I need two of those. I could fold this and do it, but we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut them both separate. Okay, two and three quarters. <laughs> I gotta say it all out loud like eight times. Okay. There's one, and then we needed two. Two and three quarters. <laughs> I have to count it on the ruler, too. Zoop. All right. Oh, you like to do the random blocks with no measurements till the end. Just sew the pieces together any which way. Ooh, yes. That is fun. All right, we have some time yet, so let's keep going here. Uh, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of all of these squares. So, all right, let's do that. Pencil. Okay, diagonal. Oop, stretch it a little bit. Got to be careful on the the um, 45 degree angle of fabric because it that's the stretchiest angle so don't dig in with your pencil just just go lightly kind of dug in a little bit there all right and then my white doesn't have a right or wrong side so we'll just decide that this is the wrong side yeah and you guys if you're new to sewing don't hesitate to if I say some term like, you know, right side and wrong side of the fabric, anything like that, uh, if there's something you don't understand, don't hesitate to ask. It is not a stupid question. You know, we're all learning all of this stuff as we go, you know? Um, and since I said it, the right side of the fabric is the side with the printed prettiness on. The wrong side is the back of the fabric. And since my white is white on both sides, it doesn't, it doesn't really have a right and wrong side. So I was just deciding for it. Um, okay, that's a whole instruction done. Oop. Oh, Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, Frankenstein is just, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm making up my own terms too, Bonnie. Frankensteining, just um, cutting random, cutting my pieces randomly and not all pretty and clean. Um, all right, let's try and do this little sewing bit yet. All right, so referring to the, oh wait, no, I need to cut a whole nother piece. So I'll cut this piece. Oh man, I really wanna do that though. Well, there's tomorrow though too. So I'll cut this next piece because uh, we need to cut something else here. Referring to the stitch and flip on page 130. So we don't, this is referring to a part in the book here that we, um, that we don't have yet. Page 137 must be where all the tips are. Uh, so. Stitch and flip, that just means sew on that, sew on the diagonal, and then you trim off the edge and then press it. And I'm gonna show you what that is right 
right now. We'll, we'll do one. Place a B square on one corner of the C square. Okay, so we need a C square now. Okay, let's cross out our B. Um, I need to cut one more thing here quick. Uh, one light blue floral square, light blue. That's my gingham. That's this one. Uh, okay, it needs to be three and three quarters, and I just need one. And you know what? This looks... I didn't press this, but it looks kind of okay. Look at this crazy swirly edge there. Let's, let's use that edge. So... Um, three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut my first edge, two edges, just to score it up. So three and three quarters, that's almost four inches. So we'll just go about to there. Sometimes I'll just zhoosh off the edge like that on the splendid sampler just so I don't have those little crazy moments there that I don't need. Okay, let's... Whoa, wow, this is a crazy weird long piece. We haven't used this much. I don't think we've used this at all yet, actually. So this is a new... a new... Um, new fabric for my quilt so far. All right, three and three quarters. So that's way up here. So I'm putting that line along a ruler line and this ruler line along my edge and we should have a nice square then. Three and three quarters, three and three quarters, okay. Math is working for us again. All right, now we can sew. And we are also done with this crazy big piece. Throw that away. Okay. So what we are going to do, okay, referring to the stitch and flip, place a B square in one corner of the C square. So, ooh, this is hard to see what the wrong and right side is. This is the wrong side. I think that's the right side. Okay, so we're going to place one of these here. So trim and press, place a B square in the opposite corner of the C square. So trim and press, place the F in the lower left. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. I know it's a, it's, we're getting late here again, but I really want to sew this, <laughs> so let's do it. Okay, yes, so go by the pictures. So we are gonna, with uh, the right side up, so the good side, the front of the side up of our big piece here, this is the C piece. We are gonna, with, with right sides together, so I'm gonna flip this down, I'm gonna put this in one corner, just pick whatever corner, um, you know, I would go by the picture. So they're putting it in the upper, um, upper right corner or upper left corner here. So you don't want it this way. You know, that's you're sewing to nowhere there. You want it from an edge to the edge, that diagonal. And we are going to sew exactly on that line. So we're going to sew right on that line and then we're going to trim, trim this edge and press this up so it's along our sewn edge. And then we're going to get that little pretty piece right there. So that's that's the plan. So let's do that now. <laughs> Go girl marathon. I know I'm just, you know, we're sewing. I, I really honestly feel like, oh man, haven't sewn in ages. And you know, we really haven't because we've done all this, these handwork blocks. So I mean, it's just feeling good. I feel like I haven't been here in a while. All right, I'm going to use my stiletto to just help guide the fabric in here a little bit, but I'm sewing right on that line as best I can. Sometimes I'm a little crooked. Oh, it's fun learning something new. Yeah, totally. And this has, this is a good, nice and solid pieced block, right? There's no applique. There's no um, you know, English paper piecing, there's nothing fancy. It is just cut these squares, stick them on to try stick them together and to make triangles and, uh, um, you know, puzzle piece it together. It's, it's a good piece block. All right. So we sewed right along our pencil line there. I, so some people at this point, they will cut off the excess before 
pressing this up. I like pressing first because I can use this outside area as a guide. I can like pull and match it up to the, match the edges up and that will get my whole piece a little more square. So that's what I'm gonna do. So first let's, let's just uh, press it to set the seam. I always give it the seam a little press. Heats it up, kind of sets it into the fabric. That's the theory, I suppose. That's what I hear from people. All right, and then I'm gonna fold that piece up. So, you know, here's the trick. You don't wanna fold this piece down. Everything on the, the outside, that's gonna be our excess. We're gonna, we're worried, we want this middle piece. So I'm gonna fold that up. I'm gonna give it a little press, just get the seam going. And then I'm gonna match up. I'm just gonna pull until it, till it matches along the edges here, like a good old square. That's looking good, matching the edges there and there. So let's just give it another good little press. Kelly, uh, Kelly's saying every block is something new for me. That, you know, honestly for me too with, with this, but definitely the first Splendid Sampler for the Splendid Sampler 1, everything was totally, totally new. Um, so now I feel way more confident with, with this quilt, but still every single block, there is something new, something, um, something to try. It's just, I'm having a good time. So, all right, now we have, we have our piece. Um, here we go. We started here. We have it pressed up. We don't need all this excess anymore. So I'm just going to fold this back. You can use a ruler and a cutting mat or in your rotary cutter. So I can open this up and put my diagonal right there. I can put that at a quarter inch and cut, but I just take a scissors and cut about a quarter inch away. I find that that's just faster and easier for me. But if you want your perfect, perfect, perfect quarter inch, then feel free to, um, feel free to use the rotary cutter. And then this is just scrap. We don't need that anymore. All right. So that's our first, that's the first bit. So the next, um, next one, we're going to do that. I'm going to finish this whole step. I'm going to go all the way through four. I think, um, we're going to do the same thing, but on the opposite edge, the opposite corner. So we're going to put it here, making sure that that diagonal line is touching edges and we'll sew that. And that will be our other little side there. And we have that one little pointy edge, which is, which is that little white square. All right, let's angle you guys a bit better. There we are. A little, little wiggly tonight. Kitty scratch it in place. All right, I'm gonna get the stiletto in there again. My presser foot's funny that I, I don't like this angle on the presser foot. I'm sure it has a purpose, but it just kind of gets in the way for me. And I'm just using these little fabric pieces at the front and the end. We call them leaders and sometimes leaders and enders. Um, it, it's so I don't have tons of threads hanging out all over the place. I just have that little thread to cut. So, all right, let's press this and uh, trim it then. So again, I'm gonna press it first just so I can use those edges as a guide. Oh, if you've not found me, you have problems. Oh, Kelly, I'm so happy you're here then. And you guys uh, remember all these videos are gonna be up on YouTube after I'm done and they're grouped by block as well. So that should make it easy if you need to, um, if you need to search it up again. Okay, so let's uh, trim, trim that away. The quarter inch. Or so make sure you don't cut that anything else. You just want just want that little corner edge. So that's garbage. All right, that is our top and bottom piece here. So those are those two pieces. And now we need to add this itsy piece here. So the same thing. You know, make sure that it's your diagonal, you're placing it just like this photo. 
So they're going up in this direction and then it goes down here. So again, now the diagonal is going the other way because you know we don't want you know we don't want the diagonal going to nowhere. That's not going to get us anywhere. We're, we'll just have like some sewn wings there. We want to have it so it's touching touching the edges, just like that, and we will we'll sew that piece. Yay! And then step four will be done. Hey, we'll be done with page one of these instructions. I'm stoked about that, and all our little pieces will have. Um, will be partially sewn. Man, you guys, I want to sew those next pieces on too. Then we'll have one block. I might, I might do the next step. <laughs> then I can have more fun doing show and tell tomorrow of my, of my mom's quilt. We'll see. We'll see how we go after this. So if you don't mind bearing with me, uh, going over a couple minutes tonight, I'm having a good time. Thanks, Kelly. Got my little, my little kitty friend here. So I always have a friend with me. <laughs> All right, let's get this little corner bit. Jeanette, you got 30 blocks done this week? Holy baloney. That's crazy town. Congrats on that. Holy cow. All right, same thing. I just gave it a little press and then I'm going to use these edges as a guide to match those edges up. That's actually really nice. Like if you didn't sew it perfectly on the diagonal, having these edges to line it up with is going to be really helpful um, to square it up, but ugh, it looks so cute. Okay. Look at this fun block. A lot going on here. All right, we need to trim the seam allowance from there. There we go, that's garbage. Yay, and we got our four, step four. Check that puppy off. Um, oh, and we also, we also used up the C square. So we really only, we have these two left and we have an H and a J. So we're getting down there. All right, let's turn around. Yeah, so that's what I thought. I thought I saw this is step five. I want to sew this to, oh, this is actually, there's kind of some work here. We got to press it open, but I kind of want to do that because then when I travel, I can have all these pieces together right away. So I'm going to go ahead and, and finish this up, just these bits today. Yep, tulip top done today. Exactly, Gretchen. So it looks like I'm going to sew this piece to this piece first, then we'll press the seam allowance open. And then I'll sew this piece to the whole bit. You know, this will shrink up once once we delete the seam allowance. That's cute. It looks like a little kitty. Ooh, look, if we go like this, <laughs> watch this here, and we throw... <laughs> okay, it's obviously getting late because we're getting crazy here. There. <laughs> Those are the kitty eyes. Now we got a kitty. <laughs> a kitty instead of a tulip. All right. <laughs> probably thinking geez lady just get sewing stop playing around okay let's match up our edges you can kitty scratch by just like doing a little bit of I call it kitty scratching where you just kind of scratch the top piece and that will kind of move it around I can tell that my it's I'm not matching up which means my seam allowance might be a hair off, but let's let's see what we get here. I think my scant quarter inch is a, a hair scant. Let's get this guy to help me out. All right, that's the first one. We need to press this first before sewing the next piece on. Oh, Jeannie, you thought it looked like a kitty too. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, we got a little yellow kitty cat there. Um, all right, so let's press it open. I always like pressing it uh, to one side first. 
here you guys are a bit shaky there we go <laughs> you have to have your wits around around you to do this block I know so that's why I've been crossing off what what number what part I just did and and all that just because there is a lot going on with this block and I want to know I want to make sure that I'm ending like I'm, I'm on the right step and everything and that's actually kind of why I'm doing this cutting and then sewing as I go so I don't have all these little pieces laying around um, that I don't remember what's what. So this is actually working really well for me, um, just cutting and then sewing right away. All right, so let's press it open. So we want the seam open this time, not to one side. So I press it to one side first and then, then I can press it open like that. Oop. Smushed that seam. Let's, let's try and repress that. Let's go this way. How about that? Okay. And uh, we'll sew that second piece on and press it and then we'll for real be done tonight. So we did a little long, little longer show tonight, but I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. We're getting this guy, getting this guy figured. All right, now this one goes up here. So let's put those sides together and we'll sew that. All right. I think we're pretty, pretty together here. Oh, you, your um, eyes are so sorted. I miss your blue geek glasses. Yeah, <laughs> like my my blue blocker, blue blocker. My um, my blue light blocking glasses. My funny uh, granny glasses that I'm wearing. I actually bought another pair uh, yesterday. Noeline so soon uh, it's gonna take a few weeks to, to arrive because they have to put in like the blue lenses but in a few weeks you guys will get to see my new uh, uh, blue uh, blocking computer glasses ba basically they block um, they block blue light which is good in the evenings and you know the lights that I have on me during um, during um, our show here they are like sunlight so those you know my my glasses help block them and man they've been so tired lately but i've heard people saying that their allergies are making making their eyes super tired and just lately my eyes have been like that like i can't look at the computer screen for more than like a few minutes till they feel just drained and i'm wondering if it has to do a little bit with allergies so i've been wearing these glasses a lot a lot lately and soon I'll have some cute new ones um, I got new ones just cuz my my husband wanted some cuz he's always on his phone in the evening and he he read that he should probably have those too so I, I got him some cute ones and then by getting a pair I was able to get a pair of the frames for free I had to pay for the lenses in mine but the frames were free so I got these cute little cute little pink frame glasses and I'm pretty stoked about them but it'll take a couple weeks uh, for them to ship, I think. You're the same lately too, Gretchen? I think it's allergies. We're either all just staring at our phones and computers too much all of a sudden, or, or allergies are, are kicking, kicking me, kicking us lately. Probably a little bit of both, right? All right, let's press the front of this quick. We got a lot of seams going on here. Hot, hot, hot. And I think I'm, yeah, I can't get the seam to stay open. Yeah, we got, we got the top of our tulip done. Okay, that makes me super happy. That is some good progress on, on this block tonight, I think. So here we are. Uh, let's, let's get this blue one out again. That's pretty. Both of these blocks, both of these variations are awfully, awfully cute, I think. But my tulips are yellow, so we got that. Uh, so all we have left is um, these really two strips only, this strip and then this strip. Um, 
I'm not quite sure how it's done. Yeah, it looked like we had that seven piece where we had to do that funny angle and stuff. So we'll we'll do that. Ooh, we get a cross out five. Let me remember we did that. So tomorrow we will start on six, and we will. Uh, it'll be the leaves. So the leaves. That teeny little nubbin was gonna be this fabric, and then we are gonna do the. Let's get some white back here so we can see it. So we had this little triangle here, and then the leaves were going to be this. Although now I kind of want to do the other way, which we still could because we haven't cut anything out yet. That's another benefit of not cutting anything out yet. Kind of like these are the, as the leaves. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think I kind of like these, these big swirlies as the leaves. Here's the other option was that this is our, our big leaf, and then we just have this little swirl as like a little nubbin. Yeah, I think we'll do the swirls. Should we do the swirls? Or you like it, Gretchen, you like it with the circles? We could do either. Swirly leaves, yeah, I think I like the swirly leaves. They, they stand out a little bit more, so I'm gonna just, let's make a note. <laughs> Since this is confusing, let's make a note. So I, I want, I want these to be, let's call them swirls too. Swirls. And this we want like the big circle. Okay, there we go. That's what we're gonna do instead. I think that'll be, that'll be nice and decorative and, and pretty. Okay, so good. I think it looks like we are all, we're all kind of liking the swirl leaves. So yeah, that was neat. We wouldn't have known that. I don't think until we got this far, and if we would have cut it all out already, we would have missed our missed our opportunity to do that a little bit. So I'm pretty happy about that. So all I need tomorrow is these two fabrics um, and our and our white fabric, and I really probably don't need to bring all of our other all of the other fabrics. I can just bring these three little bits. So that's nice. Perfect. So all right, guys. Uh, locked in, exactly right, Nolene. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. Hello, so thanks. Uh, th here's my blue blocking glasses. I have to angle them a little down a little bit, otherwise you guys can see my my lights in there. But uh, I'm well, I'm happy about this. So thanks, thanks for sticking around with me a little bit more today. Here we go. Um, so this is the size we got so far. So we just need those that extra little strip. We're going to get this block done tomorrow, I think. Yay! That's good. So one more uh, one more block will be finished. Oh, that makes me feel great. Uh, then we get back to the hand, hand stitching again. So again, tomorrow we'll be finishing this block and I'll be showing you uh, the quilt as you go stuff. So I'll be at my mom's house. We'll be on location. Maybe you'll hear the frogs. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a look at her quilt and we will look at the quilt as you go because that's what she's doing and, and she's starting to actually quilt her her blocks that she's quilted already together. So I think it's going to be great. Uh, we'll We'll go over that. And I think, I really think that that's what we're going to do here. So we'll do it ourselves on the quilt as you go thing too. So, all right, I will see you guys tomorrow at uh, hopefully the same time, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. If I'm not there right away, I will text you. Like I said, my husband has a meeting first, and then we're going to go for the drive. It's a five-hour drive, but I'm hoping to be there on time for uh, the the um, Facebook Live and will be in my mom's sewing room. <laughs> All right, I will get this up on YouTube uh, in a new category for this blog, the Tulip what is it called again? Tulip and Bloom uh, section. And it will be up there in uh, about a few minutes or so. So thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.